Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel is for you. So what I have on the bench this week is two 46 millimeter sockets. Uh, this one is chrome vanadium and quite heavy and strong. And this one is PLA vanadium, I mean just PLA, yeah. So why the heck would I print a 46 millimeter socket out of plastic, right? Well. This one is a bit too short for the application I'm trying to use it for. Uh, and that application is a little bit special. So let me actually take you over to the location I need this for. All right, so this is a Kubota diesel motor. It's a 1.7 liter motor. I got this for another project. It's used, it's an unknown condition. Um, why would I buy it like that? Well, I got a great deal on it. Even if it doesn't work, if this thing is locked up and has serious internal damage, I got such a good deal on it that even if I sell just the injection pump or water pump or a couple other parts off of it, I will easily get my money back. I'm hoping that it's okay, but I don't know. And the first thing I want to do is try and turn this thing over and see if it's locked up. So this is the, the, the pulley here for that spins the water pump uh, and would also have the starter on it if it had a starter. And I can't turn this guy by hand, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's locked up. There's a fair amount of resistance in trying to turn this motor. So I went and I grabbed my 46 millimeter socket and lo and behold, it doesn't fit. The crank just sticks out too far here. You can see it's just bottoming out. I'm not even getting to the hex on this giant nut. Now I don't want to take this nut off. I'm just trying to turn this pulley. So what I did is I 3D printed a 46 millimeter socket and it's 46 millimeters on the inside and on the outside. So I can drive it with just this regular 46 millimeter uh, reel socket but you can see it's quite deep. It actually goes down into a, a sort of a pyramid shape uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one for strength, but also uh, this guy is printed in this uh, position on the bed. So by sort of having that pyramid shape going up in there, uh, I only have a small bit where it's got a bridge across, uh, sort of at, the, at what you call the bottom of the socket from this perspective. And we can see this easily goes on here and engages that hex. So it's my hope that with this socket, um, I can spin this motor over by hand and see if it's locked up. So guesses, I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. Uh, this is pretty thick. Here's my, my hand for reference. Uh, and I printed it with a fairly high infill. It's not solid, um, but I printed it with, I think, I don't know, at least 50% infill. So I think this is going to be strong enough to turn this motor over, but I'm not sure. Hit the pause button, comment down below what you think, and I'm going to go get the correct, uh, the correct wrench to engage this and try and turn it. Okay, so it is a three-quarter socket wrench to drive this guy. Uh, this is huge. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in. And I did a little uh, arrow here in paint marker just on the pulley to make sure I knew which direction this guy is supposed to turn. Um, from the water pump side, it's supposed to go clockwise. So, all right, let's see what happens. Well, it's not locked. Fair amount of resistance, though. Oh, there we go. Must have been on the compression stroke. Oh, I could hear it sucking air out of the intake. A lot of resistance. There it goes. Turn the spring back on me. Wow, I am uh, <laughs> putting a lot more resistance, putting a lot of force on this to turn it. I honestly didn't think the socket would hold up uh, to this much force. Just heard a puff out of the exhaust. All right, so I am both pleased that this engine is turning, but I'm even happier that this guy held up. Uh, we can see, like I mentioned, we are getting some deformation here. I wasn't opposed to buying this in steel. It's just when I looked for a 46 millimeter uh, deep socket, I couldn't find any anywhere that weren't uh, either in excess of $200 or 
more than two months back ordered. I ordered one anyway, and lo and behold, it actually came within a couple of days. Um, in fact, this came off the print bed, and I think later that same day, uh, this actually showed up in the, in the mail from, from Amazon. So, you know what that means. What do you think? Should we test this guy to failure? So we see how much torque this guy actually takes before it gives? And how's it gonna give? Is it gonna crack apart? Or is it just gonna deform, sort of round over and slip? Notice this side here where we have plenty of meat to engage uh, from the real socket. Nothing at all, I mean, it looks perfect. But here where we're engaging on such a shallow nut, it's deforming. Let me get a torque adapter and let's see what it takes to break this thing. All right, so here's what I came up with. Uh, there's a bunch of adapters on here because I went from three quarter to half and then from half back to three quarter uh, to drive our socket. So, uh, and to keep this guy from moving, I put the belt on and I just put it through here, uh, through a steel pipe and then tighten it up with this clamp. I don't know if that's gonna work or not. We're about to find out. Uh, let's see, this guy, he just turned off. Get this back on. All right, so this is gonna show us the peak torque. So if I start to pull on this just a little bit, you'll see this number start to go up. So I just gave it away. It's gonna to go to at least 8.3 for sure. So pause the video, put down in the comments below, how high do you think this is gonna go before it breaks and what do you think the failure mode is gonna be? I'm gonna say 50 foot pounds and deformation. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Probably turning where you guys can't see it. It's at 40 right now, 42. Let me make sure I am all the way in on that nut. Now it looks like it's actually might have backed off a little bit. I think it's going to deform. Oh, we're over 50. Something's slipping. I think the belt's slipping. 59, 60, and the belt slipped at 65.7 foot-pounds. This is camming off a bit, so I think that is how it's gonna fail. Let me see if I can tighten this belt up even more. Okay, gauge is still on. We topped out at 65.7 last time. Belt is still slipping. Oh, I think it's turning. Yep, it cammed off. At 69.1 foot pounds. Let's see what it looks like. Yep. So it deformed. Now, I don't think you're gonna achieve uh, that, that 69.1 or almost 70 foot pounds on a smaller hex. But that is impressive. I thought I might have been aiming a bit high at 50, and that took 70 foot-pounds of force at 46 millimeters to round off. And I didn't print this at 100% infill. It might have gone further at 100%. Um, just for reference, lug nuts on your car are probably on somewhere between, I don't know. Actually, uh, let me check the spec for my Tacoma. So I checked the spec, uh, it's 89 foot-pounds for my Tacoma, and we hit 70 with this. Just to give you an idea of how much torque that is, almost the same amount of torque that it takes to properly tighten the lug nuts on your car. I'm impressed by that. All right, let's go take a look at the design for this, and I'll show you the considerations that I made to make this as strong as possible. All right, and here is our design for this. You can see I got a bit cute and I put 46 millimeters in text on the top, sort of engraved. And this is the top of the print. Your orientation uh, is this face down here on the print bed. And I will make the STL available for this. If you're trying to loosen a big 46 millimeter nut, this is probably not gonna do it. My guess is anything that you would need a 46 millimeter nut for, it's probably gonna take more than 70 foot pounds of force to remove. That said, I don't know what the failure point of this guy is on a larger nut. Remember, we had no damage on this hex face up here. It's just we were only engaging on maybe three-eighths of an inch of, of that nut uh, just because it's such a shallow nut on the crank pulley. 
Uh, but this would certainly be valuable if you've got a Kubota engine and you're just trying to bar it over, either as part of the engine building process or to test to see if it works. Uh, since you can't use a standard 46 millimeter socket, you need a deep one, and not too many people are just sitting on a 46 millimeter deep well socket. So uh, some design considerations for this, really strength was the number one consideration. I tried to really over-engineer this from a strength perspective. You can see I maximized the, the, the width of the, the socket here at the bottom. I measured the distance between the, a point on the hex and the inside of that pulley. And I designed this to take up as all, of this, all of the available space. Basically, I could not make this distance here from this point to this point here on the uh, circumference any thicker. That was, that was the maximum amount of meat that I had to work with. Um, also from a strength consideration, remember you're transferring all of that torque from this hex face up here to this hex face down here. So if I get rid of this face here, you can see there is quite a bit of plastic uh, that provides that interface between this turning piece up here and the turning piece down here. That is all uh, infill, um, you know, above this sort of pyramid type section and this section up here. So you have a lot of strength. If, if we were to extend this at, at the full 46 millimeters all the way up uh, and get close to this hex up here, it would rip apart. There just wouldn't be enough material to hold it. But the way that this comes up and gives us so much material up here at the top, it's quite strong, as you can see. I mean, it didn't stress there at all. Also, that enabled me to print this guy without any supports inside. That would have added quite a bit of time to this print if I needed to print supports inside of here. But since these slope up at an angle that the printer can handle, uh, and we only then have this small section at the top, it just bridges across that with no issue. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I do a new video like this every single Friday. If you enjoyed this, if you enjoy seeing 3D printing getting used for practical purposes, whether it be in the shop, around the house, as part of another hobby, and not just printing things like benchies, hit that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I will see you next Friday. Mm -hmm.